Hey, what is up guys? I am in a random hotel room. I've uh, left Thailand and I'm kind of on a, on a trip. And I wanted to update everyone with a little message uh, that I got, a little answer to this message. Really expecting that you support Palestinians with this take. So you support the Palestinian genocide that the Israel is committing against them. A few bad guys paraglide in Israel, commit a handful of atrocities. So Israel goes and bombs near half of Gaza. Second Ukrainian president entered a peace treaty a long time ago and said no, that that uh, he wants a continuation of the war, negotiate. Both people are dying, vice presidents are being killed, horrible things exist. Soldiers are doing their jobs. Zelensky should immediately plead for a peace agreement, hundreds of millions of dollars. I'll read the whole thing later, but let me, let's continue. I get a lot of these messages and I don't have the time or patience to respond to everybody. And I've realized that most people that write anything that's you know anti-Ukraine or pro-Russian war, most of them don't actually want to be educated. I can write a very thoughtful response, send them links, send them proof, be very logical, try to help them or educate them. Most of them don't actually want to hear it. They just want to double down, have an argument, or I don't know, we're trying to change my mind somehow. And I'm like, you know what? If Russia was in the right and Ukraine was the wrong, I would know by now. And I would have changed my mind a long time ago. I I want to answer this question, right? And 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 no shade to Braxton. He actually seems like one of the, the nice people who genuinely cares about civilians and people and world peace and that's why i want to answer his question because if someone like him who's just like the standard like young good looking you know like american guy who likes like dirt biking and wakeboarding you know and he travels if someone like him can fall for this disinformation and russian propaganda then everybody can so let me let me answer this okay he writes, really expecting that you support Palestinians, Palestinians with this take. So you support the Palestinians with the genocide that Israel is committing against them. A few bad guys paraglide in Israel and commit a handful of atrocities. So Israel goes and bombs their own gods and starves them. Secondly, Ukrainian president could have entered into a peace treaty a long time ago. And he said, no, that's on him for the continuation of the war. After the peace treaty could have been negotiated, also by every agency that news media is saying Russia is the bad guy. That's how you know they're probably in the country in the right. Yes, I feel bad for all the casualties on, of war on every side. Bystanders being killed is a horrifying thing that exists. But that's what happens when leaders are unfit to rule. Soldiers are doing their jobs regardless of who is winning or losing. If losing is intimate, intimate, imminent, then Zelensky should immediately plea for peace agreement. He doesn't care about Ukra the Ukrainian people. He's personally amassed tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars since the war started. It seems probable that he will sacrifice every soldier to ensure he continues to get as rich as possible by taking money from the US government before ending a war that is profiting himself and costing his country unimaginable lives. May God bless everyone. We need God. Small g, more than ever. Uh, man, now that I read this again, especially the voice, maybe you're not really one of the good guys. And it's funny, because this guy actually, the, the re reason why we start talking he just ran, I don't know how, how I met him, but a couple years ago, well, many years ago, like 2019, four years ago, he wrote me saying, Hope Thailand is kicking ass, man, trying to plan my trip out over there, but wanted some advice since you spent a lot of time there in the region. I wanted to do the South Eastern Loop, but don't know what country to start. Haha. -ha. I sent him a blog post with a ton of information. This is like a, I don't know, probably like a, 10 page blog post that I wrote basically for friends who always ask me this question. I'll link that down as well if you guys want to see it. But basically, like, I need to break this down. First off, I'm going to answer the, the Ukraine part first. I know this is two parts. Is President Zelensky getting rich 
for the war in Ukraine? Has he amassed hundreds of millions of dollars since the war started? And is that why he is prolonging the war for his personal gain? No. It's so stupid that that's why I always just assume it's, it's Russian bots that are writing this stuff. First off, President Zelensky was very rich before he became president. He had at least $20 million, and that's from owning part of a production company, or maybe it was his production company. Uh, so he owned a production company that made you know, TV shows, probably movies, things like that. He was a very famous actor. He's, he's kind of like the, at least Jimmy Kimmel of, of Ukraine, if not like an even more well-named TV host. He was more famous than Trump, let's say that. And he probably had more money than Trump, too. And he became president, not, not to make more money. I think he could have just, he could have made, he could, was making plenty of money. So let's not get into why and all that stuff, but he's, he didn't he did this for money. He's not making money. And how do I know that? Because America is not sending Zelensky cash. He's not sending him checks. <laughs> The vast majority of all the aid that is sent to Ukraine, when you see $60 billion in U.S. aid being passed for Ukraine, the vast majority of that, 99% or 90-something percent, that is in military techniques, like whether it's tanks or helicopters or missiles or, you know, ammo, that America mostly has already made. It's, just, it's like in our storage warehouses. And these things have an expiration date on it. So if we don't use it or give it to someone to use, every 20, 30 years, we're going to have to replace it anyways. So the money that's passed, first off, is good for America because it creates more <laughs> jobs. It creates an economy because that money is mostly just going back into America. It's not cash. It's not a check. right? We did a whole a podcast on Invest Like a Boss with Jake Bro. You can check it out. We talk about that in a very deep dive. If you ask Ukrainians, like, you know, is, is Zelensky corrupt? They will say, no, he's not. Like, there's a lot of corrupt people out there. Everybody in Russia is corrupt. All the politicians are corrupt. Zelensky's not one of them. And the fact that he's using this as an argument already makes me know that he's been brainwashed or at least just following, blindly following Russian propaganda. And when I say Russian propaganda, I don't think he's watching RT. I don't think he's watching, you know, Channel One in Russian and translating it to English. He's getting it from someone who parroted some crap a Russian troll wrote. Paid trolls, paid propaganda trolls. I, I, people don't freaking realize this. It's a huge business. The Wagner Group. They had a whole office with hundreds of staff in St. Petersburg. It's still existing, even though the head of it is kaput now. Prozhen. If you get in he's dead now. All right. Most likely because <laughs> he tried to go against Putin. But <clears throat> he literally has a whole center in St. Petersburg that is just to spread propaganda and misinformation. So the fact that people watch this stuff and read it on Twitter and Reddit, all these true social, all these stupid places and parrot it thinking it's real, come on guys, like you, like use some common sense, use your brain, do some research, talk to someone who actually lives in Ukraine. Also by every agency and news media saying Russia is bad guy, that's how you know the, the country is probably in the right. So here's the thing, I do not think the news, especially Western media is perfect. I was very upset with them because they always highlight the sensationalized parts of the, of media and whatever is currently popular and whoever their audience is, they're going to highlight that because that's what gets views. I've said this even before the war started. <clears throat> I don't like the Western media because they do this. That's why I don't trust them when they say war is coming. We know for sure because the anchors at Fox News, the anchors at CNN, they don't know. They're just following what everyone else is saying, and then they just blow it up. And that's what makes it so dangerous, because you don't know how serious you should take something. What they're not doing is, 
they're not just making stuff up. They're finding this stuff, like this stuff is really happening in the world. And the reason why Russia is always the bad guy is because Russia does so many bad things that they just happen to always be in the news as the bad guy. Like they're always killing civilians, always, you know, doing all this crazy stuff. They're always attacking, you know, infrastructure. They're always doing all this insane stuff. But where their barrage landed is clear, such as here in Zaporizhia or this apartment block in Mykolaiv or here in Kharkiv, the first aerial bombardment of the city in two years. It seems the attack was carried out using a new type of weapon, something between a guided aerial bomb and a missile. It's like a flying bomb. That's why they're always in the news as a bad guy. They're the one that invaded a country. They're the one that occupied all this territory. They're the ones that are kidnapping children. They're the ones that are doing all this stuff. Soldiers are doing their job regardless of who is winning or losing. You know what? I understand that the reason a soldier is a good soldier is they just listen and they don't ask too many questions because a lot of times there's not the there's a chain of command for a reason. You can't be a grunt asking why am I doing this? Why do you want me to do this trench? Why do you want me to go forward? Because if everyone asks, nothing will get done. This is why I knew I would never be good in the military. I ask too many damn questions. And if you ask me to do something, I'll I'll first want to know why we're doing it. I want to know the whole plan. I want to know if this is a waste of my time or not. What they need are people who, when they say jump, they say how high. You know, they say move these rocks from this side to the other. They'll just do it. That's what a good soldier is. But at the end of the day, I would like to think that soldiers and police officers are human. And if they start seeing that they are being sent to do something that is inhumane and the wrong side of the law, they need to take that power back. They either need to quit or they need to turn against the person committing these crimes. I would like to think that if I was a soldier and whoever my commander was, was telling me to go kill innocent civilians, that I wouldn't do it. President Zelensky could have negotiated for peace, peace long ago. He can do it again now. So here's the problem with a peace agreement. If it's not enforceable, then all it is is a pause. So what, I, what do I mean by enforceable? If Russia promises Ukraine that this is gonna be, you know, a pause, uh, a ceasefire, you know, whatever it is, if you can't enforce that, then that's just their word. And by now we've learned, especially after February 24th, 2022, when Russia said all over the news for months, we are not gonna attack Ukraine. They're our brothers, we love them, they're family. There's no reason we're gonna attack Ukraine. We're not gonna attack Ukraine, we're not gonna attack Ukraine. You know, and then they, they do. So how can you trust a country like this? How can you trust a leader Vladimir Putin, when he just lies, when he just lies and he proves that he's lying, how can you trust any peace negotiation? It's like giving somebody a loan that you don't trust, you don't even like them. It's okay to do if you have collateral, especially that collateral is worth more. That's, enfor that's enforceable. If this person doesn't pay back the loan on these terms, they break, break the, the loan, you gotta keep their car, you're gonna keep their house, whatever it is. The only enforceable way to make sure Russia never attacks Ukraine again is for Ukraine to join NATO. And unfortunately, that cannot happen while a country is at war. And if anything, because Russia started this invasion, Ukraine has even less of a chance to join NATO anytime soon because one of the biggest rules with NATO is a country cannot join while it still has an active conflict or border conflict or an... an uh, and you know unresolved issues so if the conflict freezes pauses ceasefire whatever you want to call it peace treaty then ukraine just cannot join nato and ukraine can never be safe because i guarantee you that russia will just pause reamass their troops they've already created a war economy they're already bringing more people like all you have to do is watch russian news you can see they're basically brainwashing the next generation of, of kids in Russia. They've rewritten history books to make it seem like they're always right and the West is their enemy and Ukraine are all Nazis. All that is untrue. You know, I can't believe I even have to say this stuff, guys. Like, I cannot believe that 
It's been over two years and all this information is out there. And you have to have me, a person who was just a travel vlogger that has happened to live in Ukraine. You, I, you have to have me explain this to you guys. Braxton, I'm ashamed of you. And anybody who's watching this, who's like, well, I also thought the same or... Uh, you know, I have a friend who watches the same, you know, I'm proud that you're watching this now and I hope you're listening to it with an open mind. But if someone had forwarded this to you because you still believe in this Russian propaganda, I feel so bad for you that you fell for this Russian propaganda for over two years. It's sad to me that anybody can believe any of this, what, what he just wrote. And I understand that not everybody's, you know, educated in the way war works. Everybody you know, wants peace. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. It's like if somebody came and broke into your house, you know, whether, whether your neighbor or worse, somebody who claimed they were a family member that they loved you. They came in, they broke into your house, they smashed up half your house, burned half of it down, they killed half of your family, all right, or anyone in your family. They killed your grandma, they killed your, you know, your sister, your mom. They maybe did worse. Russian soldiers did so much worse during this war. And then, and then you've been trying to get them, you know, get someone to put them in jail. And, you, you know, you've been collecting evidence. You've been trying to fight back. And it's been two years. And someone says to you, you know what? It's been two years. You're suffering. Just, uh, just call truce. Just say, you know what? It's okay. Don't worry. You know, forget it. You know, let, let's just have a little peace. What would happen? This person will be like, oh, wow, I got, got away with that. Why not do this again? And I guarantee you the next time someone tries, people aren't going to care as much anymore. So when Russia attacks Ukraine again in a few years, people in the West are going to be tired of it. They're like, oh, that happened four years ago. We don't care anymore. Ukraine's not going to have any support. Why do you think Russia is pushing this narrative so hard for Ukraine to negotiate peace. And it's because they know that all they need is some time. Time to build up their army and troops, mobilize more people, rebuild their tanks that got destroyed, let sanctions kind of ease up, and they're gonna attack again. I will guarantee it. Every Ukrainian knows this. And this is why, even though Ukrainians are suffering, they don't want to surrender and they don't want peace negotiations. Russian peace negotiations are worthless. It's like a piece of used tissue. It can be thrown away. Nobody can do anything to force it. The only way for this conflict to end, this war to end, is for Russia to lose <laughs> and have it be so unprofitable that they started this war that they never think of starting another one again. And other countries look at it and be like, whoa, I'm not doing that. China looks at Taiwan and says, no way am I invading Taiwan. This is not worth it. We don't want to go through what Russia went through. North Korea will look at South Korea and be like, you know what? I'm not invading them. That was a cluster fuck for, for, for Russia. It wasn't worth it. They, they got nothing at the end. But what if they got a third of Ukraine? And they got rid of, you know, and they basically just got a slap on the wrist in a few years, people are going to forget all the, you know, all the horrible things that happened. And China's going to be like, you know what? That was worth it. If we could get a third of Taiwan, yeah, that was worth it. If North Korea can get a third of South Korea, they'll be like, yeah, let's give it a shot. Let's try it. So the whole thing about Palestinians and Israelis, this is so complicated. And the reason why I'm talking about it is I don't live in Israel. I don't live in Palestine feel bad for everybody that's happening. I agree that Israel's response has been in like a hundred times, a thousand times, you know, stronger than uh, what happened on October 27th. But for you, Braxton, to say a few bad guys paraglided into Israel, commit a handful of atrocities, dude, over a thousand people died that day. That's not a handful of, of atrocities. That's not a few bad guys. That's an entire terrorist organization flying into another country on a planned attack that was backed 
by other countries, most likely Russia, the Wagner Group, probably Iran as well. So yeah, it's terrible that's happening. But that's an entire different war that's been going on forever. And I'm not going to talk about it because I don't live there. I don't have any unique inside information that other people won't have. It doesn't mean I don't feel bad for people. But I also understand from Israel's point of view that if they don't stop Hamas 100%, if they kind of just do 20% or 30% and freeze it again, this is going to happen again and again in a, in a few years. And as bad as it is that they're pushing to the 100% mark where they're like, you know what, we don't want this to ever happen again, so let's get let's let's move move the needle all the way. Let's break the whole needle. It's terrible, but you can't have a half frozen conflict where both sides are unhappy. Because I guarantee you, in a few years, it's going to spark up again. And every time it does, it's even worse. So I'm going to leave it at that, uh, guys. Please stop sending me these messages. It takes so much mental energy and, and brain power to, you know, want to a- a answer these questions. And it's not my job. Like, I, I just want to be a travel vlogger. I just want to be like a normal person. I just happen to live in Ukraine. I just happen to have some common sense. You know, follow Jake Bro. He does really good, you know, every other day updates about what's happening in Ukraine. Braxton, I really hope that you listen to this open mind. Don't take this too personally. It's not aimed at you. I, you know, from the sounds of it, you're misled and you want peace. And that's what maybe what some people want. But unfortunately, a lot of people are just using the entire Ukraine war to push their side of the politics to make themselves sound right. It's really, really sad and unfortunate that people who want their president to win, you know, whether it's the Republicans, you know, or Trump, that they're like, you know what, let's just make Joe Biden look as bad as possible by having every single thing that he's funded or worked towards fail. And it's so unfortunate that Ukraine falls for this because Ukrainians, the civilians, they should not have to suffer because of US politics. I don't care which side you want to vote for. Don't allow civilians to die because you want to spread your misinformation. It's stupid. Please stop doing this. Please. I, I beg you. Good night, guys.